coming up on Star Salvation. Mother I'm screwed. Can't throw those. Iron Chef Alex Garnaschelli and Jeff Morrow, winner of Food Network Star Season 7, will mentor eliminated finalists from Food Network Star through challenges and tests that will prepare one of them for the second chance of a lifetime. This is Star Salvation. Christina, Matthew, Rosa, congratulations. You're one step closer to realizing your Food Network star dream. But there are eliminated finalists who have the same dream. Here's someone you probably know that wants the exact same thing as you. What's up, Rue? Rue is someone that could really stand in my way. Hi. This is just someone else that I'm gonna have to knock out of this competition. Hi. I see Hello, Alex Gernichelli and Jeff Morrow. I'm like, holy crap, it's the Sandwich King. This is the guy that I want mentoring me. Rue, how does it feel to have a second chance? It feels phenomenal. So, Rue, the selection committee thought that you had one of the most unique culinary points of view. But you never delivered on that promise of those bold Southern African flavors. Somebody has to go home. And that person is Rue. You have so much potential, and we were just begging for it. Sorry, Rue. Best of luck, Rue. Well, Rue, we know you love what you do, and today's challenge is all about love. You have 30 minutes to create a dish inspired by that singular moment when you fell in love with cooking. And when you're done, you have one minute to explain why the dish you created, all the choices you made, are the reason why you fell hopelessly in love with cooking. At the end of this challenge, three of you will be continuing on your journey to salvation, and one of you will be going home. Your time starts right now. Oh my goodness! Uh, she's fast. This is my kind of challenge, because I have such a passion for my first love, which was a hazelnut spread. My dish is a sweet mascarpone fried wonton with a hazelnut sauce. <laughs> Food to me is romance and sexy and passionate, so I got this. My mom is really the reason why I cook. And my mom cooks with cream and butter. And immediately, I thought of a Berblanc. For Berblanc, I chop my onions and my garlic and my shallot, and I get that into a saucepan with some butter. Coming in, coming in. All right, slippery. I also slice up a jalapeno and get that stewing in there as well. And the jalapeno also ties in with my culinary point of view of flavors of the Southwest. Have you been thinking about your presentation and, and kind of toning it down a little bit, being a little more conversational Let's maybe? Talk about, talk about food. Just talk it, just like we're talking. So do you know what you're making yet? You don't? Yes, so I'm uh, gonna sear some fish. I haven't decided which one. You there don't you know which fish? I haven't decided. I Probably the halibut because the white fish will go better. I think you should make some choices and stick yeah. to them. Alex says I need to just make a decision. I have my Verblanc developing flavor, and I need a protein now. Ooh, maybe some crispy skin salmon, though, would be good. So, yeah, maybe with that salmon. I get it into a screaming hot stainless steel pan with just a smidge of oil. Hi. How are you? I'm good. How are you? What are we doing? What I am making? making a Zimbabwean dish. It's one of those dishes that I think there's a lot of sensuality to it. You have to eat it with your hands. Well, you're starting with a fresh chili pepper, so I think that's a great way to bring the bold mm -hmm. flavors. I'm making sadza nyama, which is a Zimbabwean dish, and it means cornmeal cake with meat and vegetables. How are you doing, Christina? Pretty freaking good. How are you? Okay. Good to see you again, dear. The meat element of my dish is a stew. I'm dicing the steak so that I get it into nice sort of bite-sized pieces. Add in some boiling water, some onions, cook it down with some tomato. My only fear is that my meat may not have enough time to cook, but there's no turning back now. Christina, what are you making? Creamy bacon mushroom brie soup with house-made croutons. You might want to cut that skin off that bacon. You know that top, tough layer here? Yeah, good call. I have a lot to accomplish in 30 minutes, so I am just laser beam focused. I'm gonna build a roux. I get my shallots, my leeks, my garlic, all nice and caramelized. The bacon's in there, it's nice and crispy. Then I deglaze with white wine and let it cook down. This is not hot enough. Caramelized onions, it's a dish that you need to stand there and stir and not bring your attention away. My onions did get away from me, and they got a little bit of a burnt flavor to them. Can't throw those. This is not looking good. Five minute warning. 
five minutes left. I, I grab these wontons, one of the ones that were a little well done. I grab and open. Mother There is no cheese inside this wonton whatsoever. It oozed out. It's on. They're like, there's no cheese. Oh man, I'm screwed. Rosa, babe, how are you doing? So now I have to make a last minute call. I might be able to save myself with this, so I just prop those wontons with the mascarpone underneath, almost as a dip. Two minutes left. Coming hot, 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 hot. Moan. At the point I'm at right now, I know that I put too much flour in my root. This is gonna be too thick. If I try to thin this out, it's gonna affect the flavor, and I'm not sure I'm willing to compromise that. <laughs> Onions tasted B plus, but I only put out A work. Scrap it. Moving on. Oh yeah. Hold on, hold on. Five, oh, no. four, three, three two, two, one. Done. Woo. Woo! Wow. Yeah, buddy. Yep. Did it. Yep. I'm hungry. Christina, come on up and tell us about your dish and tell us a love story. Love to. I am nowhere near as confident as I was the previous round because I know that I have a texture issue. So when it comes to the presentation, I gotta bring it. Okay, Christina, you have a minute to tell us about your dish and tell us your love story. Your time starts now. Have you ever thought you were in love and then you really fall in love and then you're like, oh, this is what love is. That's been my relationship with food and it really took off when I went to culinary school. Little secret, I never tried mushrooms before I went to culinary school. <laughs> my husband, second love of my life, <laughs> he is in love with mushrooms, so I deprived the poor man for like two years straight. So I've been pretty much putting it into everything that I can. Time's up. Christina, I thought your choice of mushrooms and all the flavors were really great. It was obvious that even just looking at it, there was a textural issue. It was more like a dip to me. Maybe a little extra stock in there. But your presentation, I, you know, I, I thought it was a very cute story about your husband. It seems to me like the story actually was a little bit confusing. You love cooking more than your husband. No, oh, I meant okay. to say the other, but the second came out and then I was like, what just happened? I think you were an improvement over last week. <laughs> <laughs> improvement, good, that's what I need to hear. Rosa, you've titled your dish Lover's Essentials. Would you like to come up here and clarify? <laughs> of course. <laughs> Presentation is my strong suit, and this is my theme and what I'm all about, so I know I could sell this. This is a love story about a chubby Italian girl and that hazelnut spread that she was raised with. To me, this is an essential love dish. It has the fried wonton, it has a mascarpone sweet cream cheese, the strawberries. I just envision a lot going on after or during eating this dish. That's why it's called a lover's <laughs> essential. <laughs> you came out super strong as usual. You obviously have a flair for storytelling. I think you chose universal love flavors. Strawberries and the chocolate, I mean, I think those are just automatic. Valentine's Day, romance, love. So I think you made some really great choices. <sighs> Thank you. <sighs> but. But, I knew it was gonna be a but, my nudge, okay. Did you cook? Well. I stuffed the mascarpone into that wonton and it oozed out and I had, to, I had to make a call. If I saw that on a cooking show, I'd say, so she took a jar of something ready-made, she took some ready-made wrappers and she took some fruit and cut it up and she made her dish. I was feeling great about what I was delivering, so when I was getting this critique, it kind of knocked the winds out of my sails. Matthew. You got it, boss. There it is. <laughs> Your time starts right now. My name is Matthew Gronwald. I'm the Southwestern Young Gun. That's what I'm known for in Arizona. Um, my mom, she's the reason I started cooking. Um, and that was because I was terrible at sports. And she saw that there was something I adored about food. And so she pushed me in that direction. And whenever I would cook at home, if I ever messed anything up, she'd be like, oh, add some butter, add some cream to it. Today what you have before you is a seared salmon with a jalapeno beurre blanc. And there's something so fulfilling having butter and shallots and garlic and aromatics stew and add cream and let Time's up. Your dish was delicious. Oh, thank you. Good choice on the fish. I think that was the right choice. That was good that you helped direct me. So would that dish have been the same with halibut? Because for me no. it wouldn't have been. No. no way. So that's not a little thing. Mm. And if you don't know it, I don't know if I want to know you. In your presentation, is that better on the 
level was definitely toned down an improvement over last week. But we just asked you to pick a moment. I, Instead, you wound up describing a feeling that happens periodically to you. And in that way, I'm kind of left waiting for a story. Got it. This is such amazing feedback. Understood. At this point, I'm feeling good, but not great. Time for me to present. It's a second chance. I can't let the nerves get the better of me. The dish that is in front of you, it is sadza nenyama nema veggie. It is one of those dishes that just is Zimbabwe on a plate. My dad and my mom taught me how to cook everything on this plate. And I love that I get to show you this dish today because it's everything I grew up with. It's everything I cook at home. When I fall in love with a guy, and this is what up. I'm making him. The flavors I thought were great. I love the fresh chili. Some of the flavors you were told by the selection committee that you were missing, you brought those. And that shows tremendous growth and promise. The main problem with the dish was the meat. It was chewy and it was hard to get down. Rue, we really felt like your choice and cut of meat made your whole dish suffer. Yeah. Because you chose something so specific to your own culture, we needed to know maybe the food tastes better when you eat it with your hands. The time ran away from me and I was meaning to mention that you need to go in there with your hands. You did not tell us that at all. If I were watching you on TV, how do you propose that I ask the screen what I'm missing? I made mistakes with this challenge, but perhaps somebody else made more of a misstep than I did. So Matthew, I'll start with you. Jeff and I agree that you had the best dish today. Thank you. And that's really great news. What isn't great news is that you did not really tell us a story. So Matthew, by virtue of the salmon that you served us today, you are safe. <laughs> Rue, we love the story about how your parents imparted that love of the food to you. But what we didn't get was how to eat the food and how that is the true love, is eating with your hands. And then we got the food and the flavor was there, but the meat was chewy. But your food and your story enticed us enough. We'd like to see what you got for next week. Thank you. Christina, you made some really good choices in the ingredients you chose, and you really know how to build flavors. But texturally, it was heavy, it was a little bit dense. We liked your exuberance. You have a real charm. The problem is, I think we kind of were left feeling a little bit confused by your story. So that combination of food that fell a little bit short and a story that's confusing leaves you in a weak position. Rosa. Oh my God. You came out really strong, very engaging. You immediately had me roped in as a, you know, chubby Italian kid. And then we had the food, which the bite was good, but it just wasn't enough to show your cooking chops. This week, it really was a photo finish for you, Rosa, and you, Christina. I'd say it was 51% to 49. I mean, this was really tight. The 51% goes to Christina. Oh, God. That sucks. Rosa, that little whisper that you lost by really just kind of comes down to the food and some of the choices you made. Thank you, Rosa. Thank, Thank you, you for all Thank your hard you so work. Much. Thank you. I love this stuff. I had a blast. Aw. <laughs> I really want to give something back, not only to Food Network, to the world. We'll see what's next for me.